Today we're going to talk about transmission modeling with the MapleSim Driveline Component Library. This is a new library that was very recently released and it has some pretty amazing features. Um, all these interesting features that we're going to talk about today are enabled by the fact uh, that MapleSim is a very truly different modeling and simulation tool. So we'll try to touch on some of those key points and then talk in more detail about the library, at which point Dr. Vahid, who actually wrote the library, is going to take us through it. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, the drive for higher efficiency. Why was this library created? What kinds of problems does it address? Uh, and the challenges in model-based development. The kinds of problems that are addressed in industry through simulation present their own problems in simulation. So that's model-based development. We'll talk about those as well. These problems are all addressed by MapleSim uh, as a platform. So it's a high-performance physical modeling and simulation platform. And this driveline component library sits on top of that platform and enables some very, very unique capabilities. And uh, Dr. Bahid will take us through that. And then we'll go through some examples and get right into the software. So why was this created? What are the problems in industry that are motivating uh, these kinds of simulations? Really, it's just the increasing pressure on OEMs to improve fuel efficiency. That's what it comes down to, is trying to optimize efficiency. There's the CAFE standards in the United States, which are requiring higher and higher fuel efficiency. So the 2007 Energy Independence and Security Act requires 35 miles per gallon average fleet uh, fuel efficiency by 2020. And then there's global pressures to reduce energy consumption across the board. So independent of the automotive industry, just across the board, everyone's being required to consume less energy. This slide was uh, really interesting for me. So when I saw this slide, it kind of opened my eyes for why we're doing this. This really hit home for why it's necessary to optimize the efficiency of a vehicle. If you look at these two diagrams, this, this shows you the kinds of losses and where the energy is lost during two driving scenarios. During urban driving, where you're starting and stopping and idling, and during highway driving, where you're just cruising. Uh, if you look at all these different losses where the energy is lost, you'll notice that in both cases, a huge amount of the loss occurs in the driveline. So I think people generally think you want to have the most efficient engine, you want to have the most efficient powertrain, but a big part of that is the driveline itself. Um, and the driveline losses uh, is one area where there can be huge improvements made and the dividends can be very, very high. Vehicles on the whole are less than 10% efficient. And that number is staggeringly low. So that just, again, underscores the fact, the need for engineers to improve that. And one way that engineers are doing that is through modeling and simulation, uh, providing a test bench in simulation where they can, they can try different ways of improving this and come to an optimal solution. And so virtual prototyping, virtual meaning on your desktop or on a, a cluster, through model-based design and development plays an increasingly key role in powertrain design and development. Gone are the days when you uh, take last year's design, tweak it a bit in hardware, throw it on a bench and, and hope for the best. All of this is being done in software now. Uh, the whole reason that people do modeling and simulation is to reduce the prototyping cycles and costs. Um, you could just build 10 engines in a row and do 10 design cycles and come to an optimal engine. But that's ridiculously expensive and would take way too long. So the reason that people do this kind of stuff on a computer is to reduce the number of prototypes. To prototypes. Also to increase end user functionality, quality, safety, and fuel efficiency. The risk for trying out a new topology or a new, uh, a new approach in software is very, very low. The risk trying it in a prototype is extremely high. The other thing is it's deterministic and repeatable. You're running the same simulation over and over again, and you can make incremental changes and watch those incremental changes on the output. The other thing that's possible now that wasn't possible before is that modeling the whole vehicle can provide greater insight into overall energy losses and how to reduce them. So for example, there, let's say gear software. Gear software has been around for decades, so it's been possible to look at the efficiency of individual gears for a very, very long time. But what has not been possible is putting that into the context of the entire vehicle. So now you can model not just the gear losses, but the transmission losses. Uh, and the whole driveline loss, or the whole powertrain losses, and actually put that into the context of a full vehicle driving around um, through a drive cycle. So we can now look at the energy loss through individual subsystems. We can look at the efficiency losses through interaction between subsystems. And that's key. The interaction between subsystems is only possible when you're looking at the system level. And all of these all of these facts motivate a greater demand for greater model fidelity. Fidelity meaning accuracy, right? We want a higher 
uh, a more accurate model that's more representative of reality. So here's three big challenges that are facing engineers today. The scalability of the problem. So we're talking now about system level simulation. We're talking about simulating thousands or tens of thousands of equations and states every time step uh, in your simulation. And what we've found and what people are finding is that the computational complexity tends to grow exponentially with the complexity of the system. So there's not just a linear relationship. Um, the, the effort required to actually rearrange and uh, solve those equations grows exponentially as opposed to uh, linearly. Multi-domain modeling is particularly challenging because the traditional way of modeling, and I've, there's an example on the screen here, let's say I model an engine and a powertrain, and I have some inputs to that engine, and I've decided that I'm going to output um, torque and speed, and I'm going to plug that into my driveline. So the torque and speed of my engine are now inputs to my driveline, which output torque and speed into my chassis and tire. So you'll see a flow there from input all the way to output. Now what happens if I want to apply a load at the output? That completely changes the topology of my model. Now I have to figure out a way to feed that back down that chain because now the applied load actually acts as an input even though it occurs at the output. So this is the whole issue of causal versus a causal modeling. Um, this can be a huge time waster and what we're going to show you is that there's no reason to even worry about it anymore. Uh, tools like MapleSim are able to take care of this for you. And finally, real-time performance uh, has been challenging. The reason that people want to do real-time performance, what that means is running your simulation uh, with a time step fast enough that you can actually simulate the vehicle running uh, in real time. So uh, this means that you can actually drive it around. You can, it's, it's occurring in real time. The reason people want to do that is they want to replace some of the software simulation with an actual piece of the hardware. So for example, I might have a simulation of an engine uh, running on a, a let's say an NI box or a DSpace box and I connect up to that an ECU, an engine control unit. So there I have an actual piece of hardware thinking that it's controlling a vehicle or an engine but it's actually controlling software that's simulating the engine. In order to pull this off what people typically do is they'll greatly simplify the system. So on the left you'll see an actual suspension element with um, the steering linkages and on the right you'll see something that an engineer might sketch by hand which is a simplification of that. That looks like a Sayers vehicle topology um, for that one uh, suspension linkage. So that's inaccurate. That's a loss of fidelity in order to speed up the simulation. And again what we're going to show you today is that you don't need to do that anymore. So just, I want to set the stage and then I'll hand it over to Dr. Vahid who can walk us through the new library. Um, we're talking about MapleSim, so I just want to introduce to you what MapleSim is for those of you that aren't familiar. It is a truly unique physical modeling tool, and I, I say that without flinching. You know, As an engineer, I can say that without flinching. Uh, it's completely different. It's built on a foundation of symbolic computation technology, and that enables all these key differentiators. So what I mean by that is... It's built on top of Maple. Maple can solve equations, and that lets MapleSim actually use the mathematics as opposed to just the numerical routines. That means that MapleSim and Maple are handling all of the complex mathematics involved in the development of engineering models. That burden is now not on the engineer. Uh, you don't have to go open your lab book, start sketching things out, and writing out equations. That's just taken care of. The other really unique thing about MapleSim is because it can solve equations, that means that it doesn't care what the domain is. As long as there's some governing equation, it can handle it. So we can do multi-domain systems, that means we can do plant modeling, control design, uh, and in fact, we can do multi-body systems in here as well. All in one environment. It leverages the power of Maple to take advantage of extensive analytical tools, and I think we're going to touch on that. There's things you can do with the equations that you can't just do numerically. Uh, one quick example would be, let's say I want to know the frequency response of a system. The way I would do that numerically is I, I would throw in a broadband pulse, or I would run a thousand simulations with different frequencies and plot the results. Both of those are kind of tiptoeing around the fact that you're stuck in a numerical environment. If I have an equation, my answer is right there. I can do a basic manipulation, throw it in the Fourier, in the Fourier domain, and there's my answer. And because of all these features, they kind of boil down to this fact. It reduces model development time from months to days while producing high fidelity, high performance models. Everything just works faster. It's, it's a more representative topology. So the system in my simulation matches the system in reality much more closely. So just to describe this software stack in a little bit more detail, you have our analysis engine, Maple, our, so our symbolic computation analysis engine platform sitting on the bottom. 
and on top of that is sitting Maple Sim. So it leverages Maple. Maple Sim is our physical modeling and simulation platform that uses our analysis platform of Maple. So these two interact together uh, to solve these systems. And there's really a tight integration between both of them. And then we have additional libraries. So you'll see that both Maple and MapleSim have additional libraries. Today we're going to talk about the driveline component library. And then we have export libraries as well. So we can export to DSpace, to LabVIEW, to Veristand, to Simulink. Uh, now we have a BNR connector as well. And we're always adding connectors. It's pretty easy for us to get code out the door. So I mentioned symbolics, who cares, you know? I think most engineers don't really care too much about what's happening behind the scenes, provided that they get a correct numerical answer. Even if you wanted to go your whole day without seeing what's happening behind the scenes, the fact that we can have access to the mathematics fundamentally changes the quality of what you're producing and the speed at which you produce it. You can perform advanced analyses, and this is completely different than the kind of analysis you can perform in a numerical environment. Parameter optimization, sensitivity, multi-body kinematics and dynamics. So for example, in a multi-body system, I can just get those equations. I just say to Maple, give me those equations. It gives me greater insight into uh, system behavior. So as an engineer, if I have an equation, it tells me something. And if I can see those equations, it gives me insight I can't get otherwise. It's not a black box anymore. It's also going to give you the best performance. Uh, symbolic model simplification uh, gives you optimized code generation and approximately 10 times faster code than similar tools. So for example, if I made a system in another tool, it has no way to know what parts of that system it doesn't need to simulate. So you and I, if we were going to solve a system, what we would do is take those equations and we know all of our rules. I'm an electrical engineer, so I'd be using KCL and KVL and transistor equations. I would probably boil that down to just a couple equations that simulate the system. Other tools can't do that. They don't know how to do that. Uh, but in fact, Maple and MapleSim can do that. So this is why our code is much faster. It simplifies the equations mathematically without losing fidelity. And the other thing here is we have equation-based model creation. So there's a free flow between equations and your model. You can either go from your model to equations or from equations to your model, uh, which is a huge time saver. If you have some model that you want to implement and you have the governing equation, just throw them in a block and hit simulate. So here's what the environment looks like. Uh, on the left-hand side, and you're going to see this when we do it live, on the left-hand side, you've got components that you can drag and drop and connect up in the schematic view. And it's very flexible. You can change the way things look. You can make your own new blocks. At the bottom, if you're doing anything with multi-body, you get a 3D view as well. So you can either construct directly in the 3D view, or my preference is to construct in 2D, and you watch it, you watch it assemble in 3D. When you run a simulation, you get plot output. So the, ultimately, there is a numerical simulation after all the symbolic pre-processing. And then there's uh, the ability to change different simulation settings on the right-hand side, set up your probes, um, do various analyses. So at this point, I'll hand it over to Dr. Vahid, who's going to walk us through. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Derek. Uh, I'm going to talk about the new driveline component library uh, as uh, Derek showed you, MapleSim uh, has uh, a number of uh, libraries and uh, component sets. The one that is uh, recently been added to uh, MapleSim as an add-on is the driveline component library. And uh, as you see uh, in front of you, the, it, this library uh, consists of a, a number of components. The components that are dedicated to model simple gears, planetary gears, compound gears, and also differentials, brakes, and uh, torque converters, uh, vehicle dynamics, and dy uh, dynamometer engine and gear shifter. Basically, these components cover the whole drive line from the engine to tires for uh, mo uh, modeling uh, various aspects of the system. So let's have a closer look at some of the components. Uh, almost all of the compound gears in uh, transmit that that you find in gearboxes and transmission are uh, constructed using simple gear set uh, which basically is a basic gear so here we have two gears meshing together and uh, you specify the ratio uh, and also in case of uh, you wanted to define this in a non-ideal way you will need to define other parameters defining the torque efficiency of the drive uh, affecting the torque transmission through the uh, two gears. Then there is a uh, component called planet, planet gear 
and as you can see there is two planets inner and outer uh, or a set of outer planets that are connected together via a carrier and this uh, basic component block is used in uh, various uh, gear sets the other one is the planet ring gear this one does not have the uh, inner planet or sun but has the ring and the uh, rotating planet gears and also a carrier if you uh, for example combine these two together you get a planetary gear so a planetary gear is uh, simply constructed within the library itself as well using a planet planet gear and also a planet ring gear and the same type of approach is used for other components in the gear sets, uh, various gears available in Driveline library as well. And uh, as we will see later on, uh, most, almost all of the components in the gear sets of the uh, Driveline component library have two uh, different representations. Uh, one is the ideal one, which is just kinematic equations. And then there is a version that uh, you can enable it and that becomes a lossy component. There you will define the efficiencies and damping for the various bearings. And so, so as you can see, for example, here, this is the, uh, the icon on the left is the ideal case. And on the right, there's a red arrow, which indicates that this component is in the lossy mode now. So there are more components. Uh, there are two more planetary gear variation, the dual ratio planetary gear which is basically the same as planet, uh, planetary gear, but you define individual ratios for the planet sun and the planet ring. Uh, there's a counter-rotating planetary gear, which has an extra set of planet between the outer planet and the sun, which uh, changes the uh, um, direction of rotation. There are more complex but well-known uh, gear sets uh, included in the driveline library, like the revenue gear set. The CRCR gear set, CRCR being stand for for crown ring, crown ring. We'll talk about this one in particular a little bit more. And the Simpson gear set. Using uh, just looking at the inside of the uh, CRCR gear set, this is a uh, rather close-up view of the icon that you will see inside Maple Sim. And there are uh, 1D rotational flanges on both sides on the left. There are uh, three for front sun, front carrier, or rear ring, and rear sun. And the other one on the uh, right-hand side is for rear carrier and front ring. If you want to uh, know how this component is created, is basically uh, internally is uh, two planetary gear that are interconnected. Within Maple Sim, this component is uh, also created by using two planetary gear. Each planetary gear is also constructed from two planet planet and a planet planet and planet ring. So in total, we have four sub components from the basic gear sets, uh, as you can see. So these are configured in a way that represent the CRCR. This is the internal connection that is being displayed. Now we have connected the two uh, sides, the planets and carriers together. So we have now constructed two uh, planetary gears. Now we need to connect them. Uh, together adhering to the configuration of the revenue. So this, uh, sorry, the CRCR gear. So this configuration that you see is what internally happens within Maple Sim Driveline Component Library to create a uh, CRCR gear set. The user can also, instead of using the component provided, can uh, recreate the component using the basic gear set just as the di diagram shown here and also you can find the same information within the help system of Maple Sim under the driveline component library. So more components in the driveline in the gear are the differential gear. Uh, the differential gear also similar to the other gear sets uh, has two uh, modes, the ideal and the non-ideal one. And also we have uh, included an active limit, limited slip differential uh, I'll show an example of uh, this uh, usage of this type of uh, differential um, in the, uh, at the end when I go to the software itself. And uh, what we see here is a set of uh, actuation components that these actuation components are used to conveniently create transmissions 
using our uh, the provided gear sets. So uh, from top we have the revenue four speed uh, actuation that connects to uh, a revenue gear set and the actuation uh, components include clutches and the clutch table for activation. We'll look at the one of these uh, components a, a bit clo uh, closer uh, later on. Uh, so here we have five different actuation components that will make the uh, creation of this type of transmission uh, very easy. Uh, the Le Platier six speed and seven speed uh, transmissions are actuation for those type of transmission are included as well as the Simpson three speed and uh, CRCR four speed transmission. So looking at the Le Platier seven speed uh, transmission, this is the uh, configuration of the uh, actuation component, which includes six clutches. And uh, here we can see the connecting points for input carrier inputs on drive, which is the input to the transmission. And we have the small sun carrier and large sun. And the gear number is uh, selected by the user. So it can go from minus one to seven minus one being the reverse, zero the neutral, and also uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are the forward gears. So this is the uh, internal uh, configuration of this component, and this is the way this component is being, uh, has been modeled inside the uh, driveline component uh, library. And uh, here we see the clutch table. So depending on the value selected by the user as the gear number, the various clutches are activated or deactivated. Uh, so zero being uh, f open and one being closed. And also uh, various parameters for the clutches can also be uh, adjusted by the user. So uh, a more high fidelity representation of a actuation component for uh, the system can be created. Uh, now that we have the actuation components, we can, uh, as I said, uh, mix them with the gear sets and create transmission. So this is a CRCR four-speed transmission, uh, which is uh, easily created using the actuation component and the gear set together. This is a revenue four-speed uh, transmission, a Simpson three-speed uh, transmission. Uh, using the basic components, uh, you can create uh, other type of transmission. This is a Simpson three-speed uh, transmission together with an overdrive gear, which is uh, added by adding an extra planetary gear. So you can see the uh, clutches and uh, the one-way clutch and brakes that are used so, and the signals coming in. So the user can create this type of uh, transmission on its own and then save them in a library. MapleSim allows the user to uh, create and collect uh, uh, user-defined components in a, in a reusable manner and save the library and distribute that library among pe other people that have MapleSim. So this is a configuration of a Lepletier 6-speed, which uses a revenue gear set, a uh, Lepletier 6-speed activation component, and also a uh, planetary gear. Similar to that is the seven speed, which has a slightly different configuration and enables the user to, uh, the system to have seven forward gears. This is a uh, representation of uh, a transmission that is similar to ZF uh, four uh, horsepower uh, four speed gearbox. This is another uh, ZF design uh, gearbox, which is, it has five forward uh, gears. And we will see example of this. The example of this systems are provided uh, with the driveline library as part of the examples palette. And I will uh, talk about that and open up these models once we get to looking at the uh, software itself. So the other components in the uh, driveline uh, notable here is the longitudinal vehicle dynamics that uh, the, uh, has, the, has two parts, is the vehicle and the tire. Uh, the vehicle has one degree of freedom and represent the uh, longitudinal vehicle dynamics. And the tire has the uh, two uh, different versions. Uh, first to talk about the longitudinal vehicle dynamics component, it includes the wind resistance, the 
configuration of the CG of the vehicle with respect to axles and also uh, the inclination of the road and the tire component has two versions ba one based on magic formula the well-known uh, representation of the, uh, the relationship between the forward force and the slip and also a uh, simplified version or linear formulation with saturation both of them are provided and the user can uh, use uh, MapleSim uh, user interface to select the mode they want their tire to operate in and this is how you uh, simply create a uh, full vehicle uh, one degree of freedom vehicle model uh, for uh, longitudinal vehicle dynamics at the end of your drive line um, uh, system and uh, then there's an example provided in the example palette that you can visualize the system based on a uh, given uh, vehicle uh, graphics. The other components that are included are the CVT and the torque converter. Also a, a engine, simple engine torque driver is included in the uh, driveline components so that you can create a complete uh, uh, driveline system from engine to the tires. And also in case you don't want to create a uh, uh, vehicle dynamics for uh, uh, as a, at the receiving end of the, your power, you can use a dyno to more uh, have more control over the uh, power usage. And also for vehicle application, there is a two version of gear shifter that uh, provide gear up, gear down at different RPMs or based on the user selection. Now I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about the adding losses to gears. This is an important feature of the driveline component library as uh, Derek mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. Uh, being able to represent the losses in gears is uh, of utmost importance. And uh, this, the driveline component library uh, benefited from uh, our interaction with one of the biggest transmission manufacturers in Japan so uh, a lot of the things that we have included in this are based on the actual transmission manufacturers needs so uh, we included a lot of features in all the gear components and I'm going to talk a little bit about the features that we have included so what you see is one of the examples that once you get the driveline uh, component library add-on to MapleSim this example is in the example palette this is a complete uh, powertrain for using a four-speed revenue transmission. So let's have a closer look at the revenue gear. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, revenue gear as well as all other gear components in the driveline component library has a uh, uh, switch or a boolean parameter that you can uh, say whether you want the component to be ideal or non-ideal. So if by selecting the ideal true to ideal false, then you enable extra feature of the component. And once you select the ideal false, you have various uh, options uh, to uh, specify the type, of, uh, the type of losses that you want to define. For example, you have control over the data source. So when you uh, select a, a uh, assign a, a gear component to be non-ideal or lossy, then you will have option of defining your data based on experimental data that com may come in an Excel file, or you can uh, select a, as uh, defined in the graphic user interface. So you have an option here that uh, you define a matrix for at least uh, at maximum three columns, the first column being the angular velocity and the two columns after that are the forward and backward efficiency. Uh, you can also just give one efficiency and the component itself will treat forward and backward to be identical efficiency, which is the case of, for example, when you have machine spur gears. And then you have for the revenue gearbox, you have option to define the two uh, ratios that need to be defined to uh, uh, for a revenue gear system and then uh, you have the option because there are multiple meshing gears in a revenue gear set here we have one two three four different uh, gears uh, being mesh for a quick and simple simplification uh, simulation you can set use same loss data so you can use the same information for all of those meshing gear or you might uh, 
select differently. Uh, just to go uh, quickly cover the data source, uh, you can have a file which is a location on your hard drive or you can have an attachment which is a maple sim attachment uh, uh, and uh, this is a file, an Excel file, CSV file that or other type of files that you attach to your maple sim model and keep it with your model so you don't need to uh, ha update your link on your hard drive. Uh, and also for simple gears, there's an extra option for specifying the uh, losses via an input. That is also important when you want to losses uh, be affected by another part of your system. You use that option for basic gears uh, for specifying the uh, efficiency. As I mentioned, you can, uh, instead of using same loss, loss data for all of your component as it's shown here, you can say, I don't want to use same loss data. If you do that, then you need to define four different efficiencies and two different dampings. Here, the efficiencies correspond uh, to various uh, pairs of gears that are meshing together, and the two uh, dampings are, correspond to two bearings. So we have here two uh, sets planets or sets of planets that uh, rotate with respect to a uh, carrier, and the damping in those bearings are included in the base model. We'll talk a little bit about adding uh, other types of friction to these bearings as well. So another uh, feature here in the uh, gear sets, when you define your uh, losses uh, through a table, then you have an option of, uh, for your interpolation of your data, either go with the linear interpolation or C1 uh, continuous interpolation. Both, uh, both of those options are available for all of the gear components in the uh, driveline component library. Another option for the system with planets, you can specify how many planets, identical planets, uh, are uh, attached to the career and uh, rotate together, one, two, three, four, or any number. Uh, the default being one. So if you add more planets, you are uh, uh, losing more uh, energy uh, through the damping in the bearings of the planets. And another very important feature that is being included in the driveline component library is the ability to activate planet ports. Uh, these planet ports, which are optional, and the user has an option to activate or deactivate them, uh, have uh, various usage, and uh, the basic gear components in the driveline library uh, do not have inertia, so inertia must be added uh, via e external components, and to be uh, very accurate in terms of modeling inertia or adding inertia to your uh, component, you need to be able to have access to the planets internal to a gear set components. So these two uh, ports uh, are mainly used to add inertia and have a more dynamic or uh, dynamically accurate uh, representation of a gear set. Other usage of uh, these two uh, planet ports are for adding bearing friction, which I'm going to talk about that now. So what we see here is the same revenue gearbox in, uh, in two examples are shown. The component on top is a standard uh, uh, component that comes uh, with maple sim. It's a be bearing friction and by connecting the bearing friction one side of it, the base to the carrier and the uh, flange or the, uh, the main shaft to the planet shaft, you can add uh, bearing friction to the, your uh, gear set. And you can do this for all of the uh, uh, gear sets that we have, uh, like the CRCR or Simpson, or the dual planets, uh, dual ratio planetary or counter-rotating planetary. All of them have the option of activating the planets and adding the uh, extra of bearing, bearing friction if uh, it, the, the need is there. So I'm going to now talk a little bit about uh, where you can go with this type of modeling and uh, kind of uh, the, the same point that uh, Derek was making at the e beginning of this webinar. This is an example of a full powertrain model that uh, includes the 
uh, various components in, that are important. Here it uses an uh, internal combustion engine model, a mean value engine. We'll uh, talk a little bit about this model. This is different or uh, a lot more compli uh, complex than compared to the uh, torque driver model that comes with the uh, driveline component library. It has uh, the automatic transmission that we have discussed and also it includes the information for a, f for a full drive cycle. Uh, example that is used here is a New York City drive cycle. And also the gear shifter components are used in this subsystem. And also it has additional uh, calculation uh, components for uh, controlling the brakes and also calculating the fuel consumption. So uh, this, this type of simulation is uh, can be used to uh, go into what if scenarios and look at the uh, the role of different parts in the drive line in the overall fuel consum consumption of a vehicle going through a specific uh, drive cycle. So this is the internal of the uh, uh, engine component. Again, as uh, Derek mentioned, the the interaction between Maple Sim and Maple is two ways. Here, this complex uh, uh, component is made up of uh, subcomponents, some of which are uh, based on the uh, equations that are uh, found in various sources. So here we have a custom component that is basically you type in the equation that you find in a reference, and then you get a custom component and you include it with the rest. So this mean value engine benefits the, from a lot of these uh, custom components that ref, uh, reflect the uh, state of the art in terms of modeling and uh, creating a mean value engine model. The uh, gear transmission that used in this full vehicle uh, model that I've shown is the ZF gear that we can see the uh, schematic, uh, schematic view of the gear train and uh, very similar to what we see in that those schematic we see the same modeling uh, layout in MapleSim. So uh, on top of doing this type of simulation, again, as Derek mentioned, you can do uh, the, this more uh, very complicated and uh, uh, extensive model uh, and do a code generation, export the code, and use it in a real-time application. So this is an ex this, in this example, the code, uh, the C code was uh, placed inside a uh, Simulink MDL file and then uh, simulated there. The, the concept here is to create S function, but uh, the C code can be created from your model within MapleSim, and this can be a standalone C code or a C code with fixed step solver. And also, uh, they are exported to other platforms like DSpace and LabVIEW are also available. Now, I'm going to go to the software and uh, look at some of the features of the uh, driveline component library. So I'm going to uh, pause the presentation at this time and then uh, open the software. So this is MapleSim 5, our newest release of MapleSim. Uh, this is the user interface for MapleSim. On the uh, left-hand side are those various uh, palettes uh, for different subsystems, different domains. And the driveline uh, component library is shown here. Once you install the driveline add-on, on top of MapleSim, this uh, palette is shown here. Aside from this palette that includes all the components, most of which I talked about earlier, you get the uh, driveline example, which is uh, the same for other domains in MapleSim. This is a very good starting place to know how the components are connected together and uh, how they work, and then use them to build more complex models. The driveline palette uh, consists of symbol gears, as we have seen, which are the basic gears and the planetary gear sets, the compound uh, gear sets, which has the gear sets itself and the actuation boxes. They, ha they have uh, the clutch and brake components, 
uh, aside from the uh, clutch, one-way clutch and brake uh, component that you find in the uh, standard uh, libraries of MapleSim, these modified clutch uh, section also includes a dock clutch model. The CVT and torque converter are here and engine and the dynamometer and also loss, loss elements. These uh, components, these loss elements as well as the clutch and brake components have extra outputs to for the user conveniently be able to calculate the uh, power loss uh, through these uh, components and also in, ca in terms of brake clutch and one-way clutch there is a boolean output so the user can uh, probe that and uh, find out where exactly the clutch gets uh, locked and when it's slipping the differential gears are here vehicle and tire and also the gear shifter so here uh, for this uh, presentation today, I'm going to open a few of the examples for the uh, driveline component and have a look at uh, different things that you can do with the uh, driveline component library. The first example that I'm going to show is the options for adding losses. So this example shows six different models and uh, as we can see the one here is called ideal so the component used to demonstrate various uh, options for adding losses is a counter rotating planetary gear so in the ideal mode uh, you define only the three ratios that are needed and nothing else is needed from the user and then in the uh, second example uh, again the uh, actual component itself is in ideal mode but as you can see here the use planet port option is set to true so the user now has access to the planet port and can define an external bearing friction and create losses inside the component from outside another option here is shown when the component is set to false and the data source is from the graphic user interface and now there are two options one is for torque efficiency and the other one for damping here the torque efficiency is set to uh, ideal or the efficiency is 100 percent and but the damping is a non-zero value so there's losses in the gear bearings due to damping alone if you have external uh, if you enable the uh, planet ports instead of using the internal damping variable you can easily add damping from outside just to compare and understand how the in, uh, internal uh, configuration of the system works and of course you can add uh, for a system with uh, ideal set to false which is lossy and the data source is from GUI and uh, another option here is uh, set to define the loss table so there, there as I mentioned it's a table of at least three uh, at maximum three columns the first column is the angular velocity in radians per second and the, the other two columns are the uh, efficiency and you can define efficiency in various ways and uh, this gives the user some more flexibility so uh, you can have a uh, n row three column definition of efficiency or you can have a constant efficiency so because I am using uh, different data for my different uh, gears that are connecting so same loss data is set to false I need to define three different uh, efficiency data so here for the uh, first one I'm using a three column four row definition for the other one I'm just giving it one number and uh, automatically the components uh, the, uh, the equations uh, are set such a way that if you give it just one number it treats that number as a constant efficiency for forward and backward you can also give it just two numbers and if you do that the first one is the forward efficiency and the second one is the backward efficiency or you can also give it uh, in this case you can just say I want to have uh, two columns and if you do that uh, again the system recognize 
that instead of three columns, you have two columns. So the two forward and backward are automatically set to be uh, identical. And this is another uh, option that uh, the meshing efficiencies are not included. So efficiency is 100%, but uh, different damping are included for the two bearings that carry the two planets uh, with respect to the career. So this is an example of uh, applying various uh, bearing, uh, bearing and meshing friction to a uh, compound gear set, in this case being a uh, counter-rotating planetary gear set. And uh, we can have a look at the results. So we have six independent models in this Mapleson model, and we can simulate it and see the results. So uh, various uh, acceleration of the uh, inertia at the other side of the gear set is plotted here. And we can see we will we'll get different behavior in, depending on the type of uh, in, uh, inefficiency or loss that we have included in our system. Another example that shows a little bit uh, how the components are created. Uh, here is the, the same counter-rotating planetary gear. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see a uh, on the bottom is a component from the drive line, and on the top is a uh, subsystem that shows how that component is created from basic components. So this is a, a great way of understanding how the basic com uh, compound components are created. Uh, moving on to a little bit more uh, complex example, I'm going to show the uh, revenue transmission example that I talked about. So in this example, we have the engine, we have engine inertia, we have a torque converter, we have activation, gear number and also the gear itself and uh, the dynamometer is used here to absorb the energy of the engine going through the torque converter and transmission and also the dynamometer has an option for activating an external uh, load and I'm using that external load to uh, emulate the effect of brakes on my system so I have a controller a PID controller in this subsystem that uh, controls the velocity of my virtual vehicle going through a, profi a speed profile. And we can see here the gears are being shifted up, the green curve being the gears and the red being the RPM. And I'm following the predefined uh, velocity profile. And also I can see the uh, throttle and uh, brake uh, signals. I can easily add a uh, calculation for fuel consumption uh, to this uh, uh, model and uh, perform what-if scenarios. The last example that I want to show here is a... Uh, actually, I may have time for uh, two more examples. So first, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, this example that you see is two version of the vehicle longitudinal dynamics, and these models have uh, center differential, so we used uh, the differential provided uh, within the driveline component library to act as a uh, four to uh, front to rear uh, or central differential. The one on the right uses the uh, open differential and the one on the left uses the active limited slip differential. The uh, rear tires are treated, uh, are assumed to be on a low, uh, friction surface and the front uh, tires are assumed to be on a high friction and here we can compare the two results as you can see the uh, one with the using the active limit sp slip differential is uh, performing better the green curve is uh, has a higher level of acceleration so this is a, a very simple example of how that type of uh, differential can be used. At last, I'm going to show this uh, planetary gear with visualization. So we here we have a subsystem that uh, uses uh, our uh, multi-body visualization components connected to a planetary gear, and this is just so that we can visualize an, uh, a planetary gear. Once the simulation uh, is done, the 3D view is uh, 
activated and we can have a look at a uh, uh, 3D representation of a planetary gear. Similar components can of course be created by the user. So I'm now going back to the, trans, uh, to the presentation to finish up this section and then uh, open the uh, for, for Q&A. So just to talk about the key takeaways of this uh, presentation versus that the physical modeling, the important and increasingly important role of it in modeling and design testing the symbolic technology that uh, we talk about is the underlying uh, core of the uh, maple stem to maple and that will uh, bring about a lot of uh, improvement and some uh, very key uniqueness, unique features to the product and as well to the driveline component library. And maple stem environment is a multi-domain uh, physical modeling environment when you add driveline component to it, the possibilities of modeling are virtually limitless. And also the driveline component library, which is a collection of components, as we talked about, to give a very convenient and easy way for the users to model the system and perform a various uh, model-based design. At this time, I'll hand the mic back to Jack. Thank yeah, you. I just want to uh, highlight the way that we typically work with customers. So hopefully this has piqued some interest or overlaps with some of your needs and we can uh, discuss how to move forward. The best way to do that and the way that we typically work together is to bring our applications engineering team immediately. So what we do is we hook up our technical experts with your technical experts uh, and we determine areas where we can bring a unique benefit. Like Orang was mentioning, there's a lot of unique things we can do that other tools just can't do uh, and that all comes back to um, our heritage. So we try to find out where we can actually bring a meaningful value. So this is never just a, here's a box of maple sim, see you later. Uh, we always help to make sure that a solution is delivered, and that usually involves training to make sure that the problem that you're having that we can solve is solved properly. Also, even when a project is done, once somebody's using MapleSim, they always have access to our applications engineering team. We like to make sure that people are, are continually successful with MapleSim. So that's a resource that's always available to you.